Hi guys, hope everyone's doing great. Quick update here for YouTube is Sunday, 20th of October, 2024. Now, before we begin, if you want to join the group, everything's here. If you want to take the educational class, uh, classes, everything is here. There's a mini version as well as a full version. So do have a look at the curriculum so you, so you understand clearly which one you're buying. If you want to pay via crypto for any product, just message me through the Facebook page. Three months is a discounted offer. Um, whether you pay in fiat or whether you pay in crypto. If you pay via crypto, it's three months up front. And the mortgage course, which we've had on for now the last two, maybe three years now, we are meaning to get a second part of this. Hopefully that'll be out before the end of the year, if not early 2025. So it's been very much delayed, but a lot of it is is done. It's, it's a lot more complex than the first module here. Um, so there's a lot that we need to cover. But today we're going to go through the market. Now there's has there has been a lot of moves here. You know this is not linear. This game is not linear. You're not in some kind of employment here, getting the same wages every single month. Stock market doesn't work like that. You can have a huge move like we caught with Nvidia, caught the low as well as caught the top. Then you could have many many days, weeks, even months of just simply going sideways. Most important part there is the PNL curve during this sideways movement when there's not a lot of action so that would be time so call that january call that december you have to make sure you don't go into drawdown so you can take away your profits take away 50 percent off the profits you can hedge you can short you can do whatever you like but generally taking all the profits out of the account assuming that you're happy with the size of that account there's no need to just infinitely grow the size of the account it gets gets to a point where emotional uh, the size of the account is an emotional limiting factor and um, many people I've seen can have a difficulty trading a very large account. So past a certain point, there's no point. That NVIDIA, you could say, I want to call it once in a lifetime, but that wasn't a once in a multi-year um, trend. And even recently, we've got into Chinese stocks. So if you leave the group before, um, you know, these moves kind of occur, you know, we were buying into here, selling out of here. That is a huge move. You know, 84 to 105, that's nearly a 30% move. And in JD, it was close to 50%. You've outperformed the annual savings interest rate uh, by 10 times in the space of six weeks. So there's unbelievable, infinite, I would say, profit potential in the stock market. But then if you're getting bored of this kind of price action, you leave the group, then think, okay, there's not much going on. Next thing you know, you've missed the move. By the time it hits YouTube, like it is now, well, you've just missed one of the greatest moves in China that we've seen in probably a decade. So understand it's not linear. This is very much not a linear game, okay? There can be many, many uh, days, weeks where nothing's going on and suddenly, given the gamma, given the volatility, everything seems to occur now in what feels like hours. Uh, back in the day, it was nothing like that. Now, um, you know, once again, there's, 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 there's no real money to be made in NVIDIA. You know, anyone who bought this, we were getting out here in June. We were buying here, you know, right as on, right on that candle, right? Because you have days to get in, right? You were a few weeks late to this. You were buying at 70 or 700 pre-stock split rather than 500. Well, then you've missed the move. You know, that, that, that from here to here, just in call options, weeklies, that's a 10,000% move, right? So all of this is without leverage. So I don't believe in passive investing. I don't believe in ETF investing. I don't believe in shorting excessively. I don't believe in over leveraging. You can make a very good um, return here just via common stock. Obviously, you can play with options and we teach all of that. I'm not saying that you can't, but everyone should have a common stock portfolio. And then following on from that, once you've learned all the techniques, you can then go into um, the different uh, patterns that we sort of teach here and everything else. But, but most people, based on what I've seen since 2008, they generally don't have a clue. And they got very lucky given that, given that it's a bull market. But are we going to get another 15 years like this? Obviously not. It's now the decade for active management. Obviously, all of that you can do passive. Even then, I would argue, uh, since 2017, a lot of the moves in here required unbelievable active management. Like if I go to Western Alliance, it's at 80 now, and we were buying it at 6 and 8 here. Once again, if you were not in the group at that time, you've missed probably the best trade ever on regional banks, even Zion, and then it's going all the way here to 89. Our target was obviously here, 70. 
took a few years to get there. Not the point. You don't make money buying at 60, selling at 70. You buy money buying here, like Paul Tudor Jones, and next thing you know, you're selling here. But by the time the 14F filings are out and you've figured out what the big boys have done, it's already at 40. So, um, you know, there's great profit potential in um, being in the group. You get all access early way way quicker than i would ever uh present on social media youtube whatever um and we're looking at things very very closely like i said that move in china it occurred so quickly by the time you get the youtube out i mean the video i mean the um move is done so uh, great profit potential in being um involved in the group but like i said you know from this level from the election in a couple of weeks time are we really expecting another one of these obviously not we're expecting some kind of large sideways correction which is exactly what we got here so you know huge effect cause huge effect cause or huge effect consolidation consolidation so obviously we're affecting something like this now depending on how bad it gets it could be extremely bad given that it's a way five or five or five, or five, or five, so kind of a Booker T five-time Dub CW champion here, so, um, you know, it could get really bad, that, that's not the point, it's all active management, passive investing here, basically, had you bought the top here, what was that, you know, 13 years later, just to return break even, so, passive management is gone, we do teach um, the educational course, and for those who wanted more of a uh, closer sort of feel uh, we are looking at things uh, twice a week as an absolute minimum in the group um, on Mondays on Thursdays okay and then obviously any ad hoc update um, as needed because the, the market is, volat is volatile and I don't expect that um, uh, to uh, sort of end um, anytime soon especially going into the US election so um, clearly here we've made a new high uh, to me there's not much to do up here um, JD has outperformed the last five years of SPX in the, in the space of four weeks and we've taken full advantage of that so we're not index investors you know we're not boomers here who bought property for five grand back in 1940 and now selling the same thing for half a million um, uh, and it's basically falling over so so we believe this is going to go up to about 6,000 makes a good round headline one week before the election then some kind Kind of correction obviously the longer term count we we are still maintaining passively it's long from the lows we were looking at six six seventy um i clearly was looking for more of an ending diagonal so how it gets to six six seventy uh, that remains to be seen um to me the entire move is a correction rather than an impulse so the only way things can go up assuming it's not an expanded flat so how do things go up in a in a corrective manner um, um, and assuming it's not an expanded flat, it can only be an ending dangler. So it's like three, three, three. Now the question is, where was the E wave? I mean, where was the D wave? Was that it? Are we now going straight to six, six, seventy? Boom! It's all over. Or are we now just dragging out this part of the wave? This kind of three-legged. I mean, to me, that clearly looks like a three. I don't see how anyone could call that a one, two, one, two. If it's a one, two, one, two, we're gonna go probably. 17,000 on the SPX. I don't even think that's mathematically possible. Um, look at what Microsoft is doing on NVIDIA and everything else. So to me, all of that is a correction. Once again, the only way things can go up in a corrective manner, assuming it's not an expanded flat ABC or WXY, is an ending diagonal. So if it gets to 6,000, makes a very good headline. You know, it's very good for the Democrats to get this S&P. And we're so close. So, you know, for the last since the last YouTube video, pretty much a week after, I was like, okay, this market clearly does not want to form a D wave down. We've not been um, passively bearish. We've not been calling an end of the world crash. We've said it's going to go 6670. The way it gets there is a little bit confusing. I don't think anyone, um, you know, can can really give us a clean cut count from here to here. It's, it's, it's not that easy for the count. However, longer term extrapolations, um, I don't think the S&P is done. So do I feel an, an imminent crash is coming? No. Could we get to 6,000 before the election? Yes. Is there any point in passive investing? Um, I don't think so. So um, stock market investing, uh, people who invest in stocks, they make all the money. I mean, look at the queues. You know, nowhere, nowhere to be seen. So when has that happened? 
right? We don't like people buying financials and utilities and industrials. So when two or three sectors, crappy baby boomer dividend type sectors are propping up the entire index, we have divergence, right? So there's not really not much to really add there. You know, Microsoft's low high, Google, Nvidia, AMD is nowhere to be seen. Apple, fine. It might make a new high. Who the hell cares? You know, we've got a fib target here. Um, 265, you know, that's not the point. You know, this shouldn't really happen. In a normal functioning bull market, these leaders should lead the market. Leaders lead and laggards lag. And I don't like to see this. I don't like to see Apple, Microsoft, Nvidia, AMD, Google, Amazon, Facebook, all effectively, let's be honest, making lower highs um, and the S&P completely going off on one. So um, it just looks very, very good. They, they are trying to keep this market as propped up as they can before the election. Once the votes are in, there's obviously no going back. Um, I think it's a clear cut. Uh, that is going to be um, the Democrats once again. Um, you would think, but then again, you know, I'm no uh, political expert, so we don't really uh, d discuss that on this channel. So, uh, once again, if you want to take part of all a part in all of the moves early, join the group. is there for a reason, and for those independent learners, you can take the masterclass now. Bitcoin, as of probably I'd say seven to ten days ago, uh, we've gone bullish again because we don't like to buy and waste our life. I can't call an imminent crash. I'm still looking at this high to be run. We got back in here and so far it's working well. And the reason is I was like, right, stock market is very elevated. China was a flight to safety for a little while. China's kind of cooling off. The Hang Seng's forming a bit of a shakeout pattern. I don't like that after a long Chinese bank holiday. Um, no one really wants to buy Microsoft, Nvidia, Apple going sideways. SPX is very elevated. Qs are making a lower high. The curve is now disinverting. Dollar's getting short term stronger, um, which usually is bearish Bitcoin, but longer term dollar is bearish. So we were like, right, where's the money going? And we saw an opportunity, some nice volume coming in. So we're sticking with it. So we've been long since here. So far, it's working well. Obviously, the first target is here, right? I've never once said in the last six months an imminent crash is coming to 2K because of this high. This is not a real high. And we discuss what is a real high, what is a fake high. And then there are many criteria on that. This is not a real high. The way this high was formed on the futures that is, because I'm going off the futures here, right? You know, because I have to. This is just what, what we do here. Um, we're not amateurs here going off the flipping you know, Coinbase chart or the Kraken chart, you know, that's not a real high. So even if that gets taken out by, you know, 15 cents bomb, you know, that could happen. I'm not saying it will, but even then I would be able to call it some form of real high. So minimum first target would be 15 pips above here. So how much is that? I believe it was 7480 something. Um, yeah, so 74 Seven four four one five. Let me just uh, so that is absolute minimum target it has to be this high. Obviously, breaking a new high historically, you know, is it's it's quite bullish because you know you're breaking into new territory. It's never been this high before ever. So what is that? So the first target would be this. Then you can extrapolate, you know, one, two, one, two, potentially. It doesn't really look like a one, two, one, two, but some kind of corrective BS, some kind of ending diagonal kind of formation here. Then it just comes down to how many targets you want to pop off. I would be surprised if it gets above 110. I think 100 is possible. But to me, the first reaction at this high is the most important. If we just get a huge, you know, esker bomb, shake up pattern, all of that was the failure you know, we could set up a devastating move down. I'm not, you know, betting on that right now. Uh, still, the background concern for many, many months now is whilst these two markets that I'm going to about to show you have been correlated, um, they've obviously lost that correlation. Clearly, you could say for up to four to five months now. We've had the S&P going off on one, mainly because it's been supported by financials and industrials and not really tech. Um, even though tech makes up, you know, such a big part of it, over 30%. Uh, so, so we do have this ongoing divergence here. So cautiously bullish on Bitcoin. Obviously, we like to display um, our thesis by buying stock every now and then. So we've gone long Coinbase. Once again, if you're in the group, we've got people in the group who are up 
500% in weekly call options here, and it was the right thing to do. You know, this could actually make a run on all-time new highs. And, you know, do we need any other headline to pop the crypto bubble finally? Um, it's just Coinbase going off on one. Personally, I think Riot is a better proposition, but we're always looking at other ways to express our opinion. You know, I'm always going to be an advocate every single time of the stock market over crypto. Obviously, I am. Um, because of, that's what I've been doing since 2008. So I'm always going to be an advocate of trying to express any opinion through buying a stock, basically. You know, stocks before futures, forex, real estate, whatever type of invest, precious metals, crypto, I'm always going to be an advocate of the stocks first, right? The stock market started off as a market of stocks, obviously. ETFs and all this options and shorting and leveraging and futures, forex, all of that came later. It's not to say you can't make money from all of that, but historically, we, we, re, we rewind 120 years, there was nothing other than a market full of stocks, and you have to know this. Some of this knowledge um, has been forgotten through human history because people choose to forget it. You know, we got Wyckoff here. There's people out here who have not even heard of Wyckoff. Prior to me doing my various YouTube videos, you know, the, this is very important knowledge um, I was just having this discussion today, just with a group member. Um, and it's quite worrying. People invest so much in real estate at such elevated prices. But if your favorite boomer's, you know, taken a dirt nap and you've just received a 50 grand probate check after buying the masterclass secret Facebook group and the mortgage course, you're still up $49,000. And likely, had you got into JD, you'd be up 30% on your money within six weeks. So to me, it pays for itself, but you have to learn the right stuff. Anyway, bullish on Coinbase. I think we're entering a bit of a bull trend here. Um, that would be the ultimate goal. Uh, we know the last time um, Bitcoin, you know, kind of topped in 2022. Obviously, that was the high. And, you know, it's documented, once again, documented in the group, this exact Pico low, this exact low, and this low, and this low. Obviously, more recently, the last year or so, it's just pissing about. No one cares. We're here to buy the lows and then offload because you lose money on the entry, not on the exit. Obviously, you lose money on the exit too. We're not saying that. You want a, a good entry and a good exit, but ideally a good entry to every single investment that you do in any field. Go and ask a real estate investor. Lose money on the buy, not on the sell. Obviously, Riot, um, we've been in this, is working really well. So far, weekly options are up 1,000%. And the common, once again, you don't even need to buy options here because the common is up 50%. That's 50% in the space of barely a month. The average savings account before tax is 5% in the UK and the US. Even then, it's not 4 It's It's more like 4.5%. What if you're a higher rate taxpayer? You're gonna get taxed on that. Even if you're basic rate, you'll get taxed on that. So it's more like, you know, 4.0%. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna put all your money into a SIP, into a pension? People have bought NVIDIA and they've maxed out their SIPs. The SIP is the uh, is the UK version of the Roth, um, of the 401k. It's maxed at like 1.1 million. So this is the opportunity in the stock market and and um you know it's it's still amazing after all these years doing youtube videos that people just don't get it and and they consider real estate to be safe they consider gold to be safe um maybe even crypto i mean they even consider crypto to be safe crypto is a hundred percent realized volatility market so there's great opportunity if you're following the right people basically me, and you know the right information. I mean, with this, we said, right, crypto is going to go on a bit of a um, run, right? Simple as that. No need to overthink it. Obviously, they're both correlated. It's a blockchain company. You can clearly see there's over an 80% correlation here. It might have broken down, you know, recently, but generally, if you were to overlay these on top of each other, you can easily see there's a very high degree of correlation there. Recently, obviously, it's kind of lost it from October 23. Not the point. Even here, it wasn't really confirming Bitcoin's new high, and now we're going to go off on one. So, that's the correlation, clearly. And obviously, Coinbase, very highly correlated to the underlying asset, as you would expect. What do we think that is? Some kind of three-way, probably. Even if it's a five-way, it doesn't matter. This is the end of the correction. So this is the first part of the wave. Once again, very, very simple. It doesn't need to be complicated. 
second part of the wave, third part of the wave, right? No good buying right now at 10. I mean, even now you can buy, well, you can't buy it today because the market's closed. It will be open, assuming tomorrow's not a bank holiday in the US, uh, 20th October. I don't, I don't believe it is tomorrow. Um, so it's very, very simple, WXY. So how do we project? Well, we take the logarith logarithmic um, relationship between whatever this is. It doesn't matter. A, W, peaches, apple, cream. No one cares what you call it. That is the first part of the three-wave correction. Then we've had this complex correction down, which is obviously a W, X. Then it's gone into another three. Once again, call it what you like. It's some form of three-wave correction. Convert it to a line graph. It's very clearly corrective. So best case scenario, I mean, look at that, right? It's at 10. Once again, you lose money on the entry, not on the exit. And we've had multiple, multiple trades like this. This market is absolutely perfect for active managers here. You don't have to manage a million dollar portfolio to call yourself an active manager. As far as I'm concerned, if you're managing even a hundred pound portfolio, you're an active manager. This market is perfect for active swing trading managers, not passive. What has the S&P actually done adjusted for inflation? Very, very little. I'm not saying it's going to go to 40, but who the hell cares how high it goes? You've got a good entry. Bitcoin's moving. We've got a huge event risk, right? We know Bitcoin's historically, it's in a seasonally optimistic time. Why not buy right? Worst case scenario, it only hits the midline of this pitchfork here. Uh, let's say 15. Who the hell cares? Whoever went broke making, I mean, we obviously got in here because we know what we're doing. Whoever went broke making 144%. Who cares if you don't hit the home run? 520. 144% once again. Let's go back to the average annualized savings rate in the US before tax. Right? APR. And that's, by the way, let's just say you put 10 grand in that. So what is 4.5% of 10 grand? Well, it's $450, isn't it? Which is crap all. By the way, that 10 grand has to remain in there for you to get that. Okay? You know, you, you can't just put 10 grand. What do you think your bank's doing with it? How is that then? So you put your 10 grand in, you make a shitty 450, right? This would have made you what? I don't know, 14,400 in the space of two months, right? So you've made 450 and over here the guy's made 14 grand. He, he's made it in two months. So if I annualize compound that, how much is that? I've got to times that by six. Four to eighty-four. So we've got eighty-four grand over here, annualized compound it, and four hundred and fifty. There's a very big difference between eighty-four grand and four fifty. In fact, let me just do it here. I've never been so blunt in any YouTube video. But some sometimes. So you're you've out <laughs> you've outperformed. Um, a gimp in a savings account by 186 times just by buying Riot for two months and then going on a cruise for 10 months. That's what everyone did in the group. They all went to Japan because we can all read a chart and we all knew we were getting the best rate in Japan in over 30 years and we knew there was a huge crash coming. Boom. Simple. Right. Let's go back to Riot. Um, so it's very, very simple. You know, real estate, can a real estate investor make 144% return on their money within eight weeks? I don't think so. So when you break it down, stock market investing is for everyone. It's a level playing field. It is, it's, it's not dependent on your wealth or your background or your perceived intelligence. I mean, obviously, you've got to have a little bit of intelligence, but I've seen highly intelligent people not make any money here, right? I would say the best IQ is 120. Your network is not important. All you need is, 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 is a slight work ethic. Um, follow the right people and learn the right stuff, and you can take advantage of it. Obviously, you'd want to be risk, uh, you know, uh, di diversified in your risk um, and have correct position sizing. But, you know, when you lay it down like that, um, it's quite clear and it's still it's still shocking after seven years, eight years doing this. You would have thought um, people would learn, but um, I don't know, maybe people just, um, I don't know, they just don't have it in them. Maybe that's what it is. Anyway, Riot uh, and that's um, obviously Coinbase too. So what can we finish off with? Uh, we've covered pretty much everything. I don't want to cover the altcoins, but let me just cover the Bitcoin dominance then before we go. So Basically, as we have have explained many, many times, 
um, the criterion here for an altcoin season, right? So when Bitcoin dominance goes up, this is Bitcoin dominance, BD, and Bitcoin goes up, you want to be holding Bitcoin. It doesn't mean altcoins are crap. It doesn't mean salt, um, you know, the stables are crap. It just means Bitcoin's going to outperform. How's that? When the Bitcoin dominance goes down, and Bitcoin either goes up or sideways, or a little bit down, but basically sideways, you want to be holding altcoins. Once again, the correct, um, you know, the correct terminology there would be altcoins would outperform Bitcoin. It doesn't mean Bitcoin's crap. And then when you have a huge crash situation and the Bitcoin dominance is going up, all the altcoins are crashing, but specifically Bitcoin's in a huge crash down, you obviously want to be holding stable. So we saw this kind of situation in 2018 crash and in the recent crash a few years ago. You would see during that time that Bitcoin dominance was largely trending up. Um, in fact, it's been going up ever since um, and Bitcoin was obviously going down. Obviously, Bitcoin has since revived its fortunes for the last year and a half, uh, but that's the basic playbook. So what do we think is going to happen? Well, for the longest time from here, we were looking for 60%. And you can see this nice little pivot level we are literally about to hit, probably before the US election. So what am I trying to say? Are we going to hit 60% and go all the way back to zero? Biggest altcoin season ever? No. However, are we likely to hit 60 61 maybe, have a great headline, everyone FOMOs into Bitcoin, but the small educated money would be going into altcoins. So basically, we're looking for an altcoin season very, very soon. In fact, it could be here with us as soon as the next week, if not the week after, because the week after that, we've got the US election, and we're in such a seasonally optimistic time. Pretty much every Thanksgiving, you're guaranteed some kind of pump. So um, everything's going to plan there. So, so far, still um, bullish here, um, but do you want to buy your altcoins um, during the altcoin season or do you want to buy them now? Do you want to load up now so you've got them there right in the bag and then everyone else pumps them up for you? Well, probably a bit of both, but it's never a bad idea to be buying before everyone else. In fact, almost every time, be first, be smart or cheat. So, we are expecting an altcoin season here going into November, going into December. Could be here as early as um, basically next week. So, uh, that is the video. That is the update. Please do have a look at the courses. Uh, message me through the Facebook page, any questions. And like I said, you know, we are meaning to get the part two out. Um, it's 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 a lot more in detail here. There's a lot of things to cover with, with the part two. You know, this is um, simply illustrating the dangers and the advantages, mind you, if you were to look at it from an investment perspective of an amortized loan, right? But usually for most people, it's a danger, right? It's, it's, it's learning how this mortgage or any amortized loan is actually calculated mathematically because the maths around it are unbelievably shocking. And once again, amongst many things here in the stock market, not understanding why many people don't invest in the stock market, the second most shocking thing is them not understanding the simple maths of amortization. It's probably the greatest banking, uh, um, it's like the greatest evil genius uh, banking concept in human history. It's just the formula for amortization. But then how do you take that to the next level? You have to define what is good debt, what is bad debt. So we go through literally every form of financial instrument. Mortgage is one of them. Obviously, you're going to have that probably for most people. Then there's credit cards. Once again, most people would have that. Then there's overdrafts like we have in the UK and in Europe. In the US, they've got lines of credit, home equity lines of credit, first line, second line, personal, whatever. And obviously there's, there's personal loans and a few other things too. But generally, those are the four or five financial instruments we have to define what is good, what is bad, how they are calculated, and then how to use that to basically build long-term wealth. Because once you make the banks your business partners and you understand how they work, you can then become your own bank. And then there's lots of uh, what I would say is uh, basically legal financial engineering. That's basically what you're doing. That's basically how we <laughs> how we uh, uh, um, discuss the second um, part of this course here, which is a lot more detailed. There's many, many more modules. Is basically financial engineering. How to use good debt to pay off bad debt, which is an extremely um, useful and very, very powerful compounding um, concept. So look out for that.
before the new year, we would hope. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up there. You know where I am.